Hello, everyone. What do you do when things don't go your way? That is what happened to me this morning. But we have the book of Job that we can read and reflect on and compare, honestly, our lives to Job's, which is absolutely different. I don't know anyone who has had their entire family taken away from them, who have had all of their animals and their livelihood taken away from them. I really don't know anyone. There probably are some people. For sure, there was Job. Okay, let's read Job first before I get into what happened to me. It's Job 42, 1 through 3, 5 through 6, and 12 through 17. Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be hindered. I have dealt with great things that I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I cannot know. I had heard of you by word of mouth, but now my eye has seen you. Therefore, I disown what I have said and repent in dust and ashes. Thus the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his earlier ones, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. And he had seven sons and three daughters, of whom he called the first Jeremiah, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hepuch. In all the land, no other women were as beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years, and he saw his children, his grandchildren, and even his great-grandchildren. Then Job died old and full of years. So what is this telling? What is this telling us? Job went through the worst, and he was very fortunate in the beginning of his life. And then he had many years to figure out what was going on. All of his friends were saying, what did you do? God is totally hurting you, harming you, taking all this away because you have sinned. And then Job says, I know that you can do anything. And then he repented for the words that he said, which was, why was I ever born? Those types of things were challenging God's plans for him. And then you read the second part of this reading, and he's totally fulfilled, if not more than what he was. Did his children come back? No, but he had new ones. And he lived for 140 years. Lordy, lordy, that's a long time. And that's nothing compared to what the Old Testament people were living. 600 something. Do you know that because of our sin, God reduced the numbers of years that we could live? Yep. Yep. Okay, what happened to me? I get a call from my realtor, and she says, Hey, I don't know how to tell you this, but the buyers of your buyer's house, they could not make the loan. They couldn't pass whatever loan they needed to pass. So this is how it was going to work. My buyers and the buyers of my buyers, if that makes sense, they were going to close on the 21st in the morning, And then in the afternoon, they were going to close with me on the 21st. It seemed perfect. And then she said, the buyers of of your buyers fell out. So the question was, what should we do? The options were, keep your house with them because they still want the home. But they have to put their house back on the market, and we want to give them a week to get another buyer. Now, I saw their house. It's absolutely adorable. It's the biggest one in their neighborhood, and the inside is fabulous. I can't believe that they couldn't sell that house if people want to be in the city. Or we completely take it off, like we quit our agreement with this company, this company, oh my gosh, this couple, (laughs) and I put it back on the market, and we wait and see. Now, there's a house down the street from me who are listing their home, which is my model, at 400000 Mine is four seventy. There's a huge difference between those two houses. My house has a finished basement. Their house doesn't have a basement just to crawl. I have bump-out, so I have an extra three feet in my family room, 
extra three feet in my, maybe it's four feet, in my garage. I'm a brick front face. I have a very private backyard. So she knows that my real estate agent knows that real estate agent. And she wants to go over there and talk to her and say, what are you doing to mess up this market? So what did I decide? I decided to give these people a chance. Why? Because they want this house. They want a lot of my furniture. So I'm giving them my couches, my entire family room, my entire kitchen. They're keeping the um, arcade game that we have in the basement that we bought just for fun. It was like a hundred bucks. And they're keeping that. And they want to keep a couple of other things. So I'm like, this is nice for me. Because I had the mover come over here yesterday. We went through the whole house. And he said, based on what you have to move out of here, it's going to be $5,000, which is unheard of from a mover. So that's where I'm at. I hope and pray that it all goes my way, but I mostly pray that the Lord will do his will. That the Lord will do his will. Do you remember? I gave this whole house up to Mary and Jesus. So I'm doing that again. I would love it if my will be done, <laughs> but I have to pray for their will to be done. And that's really the lesson of today. And when we can compare our life with Job, so I look at my life for 42 years, maybe even to 51 years, 52 years, it was wonderful. I had a wonderful husband and then he was taken from me and now I've got to make some decisions that are hard, that move me away from a place that I've lived for my entire life, really. But I have to listen to God and do his will. I don't know what his will is for this house. I don't know why he's having this happen. I mean, obviously he knew that these other people couldn't afford the other house. So I wait. I'm impatient, but I wait for this in a patient state. I'm not freaking out. Actually, there was a breath like, whew, now I have a little bit longer to move out of here. Because the 21st is coming fast. And I wanted to spend this week here, go to mass here, get my little puppy dog blessed. Do you know that that's something that we can do? So St. Francis of Assisi's feast day was Friday. And all weekend long, most parishes have a day or a time where they bless your pets. So tomorrow... I'm going to go to confession and mass, and then at one o'clock, bring my puppy to be blessed. I can't wait. And then hightail it back down to Tennessee, unload, and then drive back. That's kind of the stage that I'm in. I wish I packed more when I was coming back and forth. I mean, I didn't have the back of the car filled up to the very top of the roof. I wish I did, because then I wouldn't have to make that many trips. But now I'm ahead of the game. And maybe these people can sell their house. I don't know. We'll just wait and see. I'm not upset. I'm not worried. I'm giving it to Mary and Jesus, which is who I gave it to from the very beginning. If you want this household, you will sell it. So we go from there. And then I pray all day. Lord, I just want people in this house who will grow a family like we did, who will love the neighbors like we did. I mean, it's great that they still want the house, but they have to sell those, theirs, excuse me, in order to get ours. So what in the world are you doing over there? What is bringing you down? What are you worrying about? What are you anxious about? Is there something that isn't going your way? Just give it all to Jesus. Ask Mary to pray for you. Get in a state of peace. Because ultimately, we don't really have the plan. He does. And so if we continue to grab onto something and that's the way that we're going to go and that's the way that we're going to do it and it doesn't happen, how disappointed will you be? I think that's why I'm not freaking out. I'm just like, hey, I gave it to you. You do with it what you will. If it's another month, if it's another year, I mean, I don't know. I just throw it up because they knew that this was going to happen. 
Jesus and Mary knew that this was going to be the case for me. And I sit and I look at Job and I'm like, okay, Job had a real long time of things not going his way, of his family being taken away, of his livelihood being taken away. And can I say that my livelihood is gone? I don't, I can't right now, but I'm certainly worried about the market because that's where all my money is. I just take it day by day. And if and when God needs to take something from me, I think that there's a reason for it. When he took my husband, I turned around and I started praying for those people in purgatory. I started praying for others. I mean, I have lists that I pray for. And now I pray more and more and more for the people who are in purgatory. I was just thinking, should I do another, oh, what are those? Gregorian masses. So it's 30 days of a mass said for that person in consecutive days. People say that when you do a Gregorian mass, you're up in heaven. I don't know. I remember a friend of mine, actually, I've never met her. She lives in New Zealand. She's on my lives a lot. Her name's Jenny. And she was like, oh, yeah, me and my husband told each other that when we die, we will buy nine (laughs) or something, nine or seven or something like that. And they're like anywhere between three and four hundred bucks. So I thought that was great. I actually need to put that in my will. I need to get or just write the kids a note like, hey, if this happens, please do this for me. Okay, giving it all to Jesus and Mary. Pray to Mary for her to intercede with you for you with you. And look at how, when things don't go your way, why? Why is this happening? What is God trying to teach me? Is he trying to teach me to love more? Is he trying to teach me to live in the moment? Is he trying to teach me not to be attached to people or things? When we sit and pray about that, I'm telling you, the answer will come. And then you will just let go of that anxiety and fear and worry. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, you know the plan for us. Please help us to let go and let God, let you come into our hearts and guide us and lead us. We ask our guardian angels to do the same. All of the holy angels and saints, please come into our life. Give us the peace that we need so that ultimately we can turn to you and love you no matter what happens in our life. Jesus, you are the healer. When things go wrong, please heal our hearts. Help us to turn to you for the answer and let go of what we might be attached to, even if we're attached to our anxiety and our worry. Mary, all you did was do God's will. We, as human beings, need to imitate you. Help us to remember to turn to you, to look at how you dealt with all of the horrible things that were happening in your life with Jesus. We love you so much. Help us to be more like your son. And now we are going to pray for all of the the souls in purgatory and those who have no one to pray for them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In your holy name, in your redeeming name, in your peaceful name, Jesus, we pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and in the Holy Spirit, amen. Let it go, whatever it is, whatever you're bummed about, whatever didn't go the way that you wanted it to go. 
there's a reason for it. If you didn't get a job, or if you didn't beat this sin in some way, God has the perfect timing for everything. And there's a reason. All right, man, I got the windows open. I just hear birds and wind. It's just gorgeous. Okay, go be love. Don't let anything rock your peace. And when things don't go your way and other people see how peaceful you are, then that's all you need. You are being a witness to Jesus, to God, to Christianity, to Catholicism. You let it go and give it to God. All right, everyone, I love you all so much. As always, let's truly turn to God, soul, mind, and body, whatever you're dealing with in those three categories, God will be there. He will help you conquer it and have a blessed and inspired day.